Why are we back at Muang Fuang? Just behind these trees. It's around here actually. There is three large blocks for sale. Nini's been in touch with the people there and we're going to um, get a look, go over there and get a look at them and get some prices. Okay, I'll have a go at that. And we're supposed to get away today. We are. Okay, for those who are still wondering where Mwang Fawang is, if travelling from Vientiane, Mwang Fawang district is only about an hour and 45 up the road. Jump on the new expressway and exit 80 kilometres later at Hinherb. Mwang Fawang is about a 45 minute drive west from here. For the floating cabins and the Three Rivers Resort where we're staying at in this video, turn right at Ban Don. Give you a look at the restaurant and breakfast. How cool is this? A little convenience store right next door, but they do have like a buffet breakfast. Not yet, not yet, because it's the afternoon. I'm just checking out the bum on these statues. I, I don't think that's a very good thing to say, is it? Because it's a religious type statue. Very cool setting. Very cool setting. Where are we, Todd? Where are we? It did say Triple Waters Resort on Facebook. We get here and it's um, Three Rivers Resort. Three Rivers Resort. Um, when we did, when we came to Mwang Fawang for the Be My Festival, Lao New Year, the bridge is just across here. We're just off the side of that, so if you was to go to that little island, you would find it. But we haven't gone into our room yet. We've looked at it, but there is nobody else here at the moment. The lady said we can go for a walk around the room, show you guys what you get for your money here. Three Rivers, aptly named because here's one that comes out here into the Nam Leap there. And one river down here and here. That's the island there that um, we were celebrating our New Year on. But we're gonna take this little room down here. Okay, the prices of these rooms. We'll show you our room in a minute, but we'll have a sticky beak at these. Air-conditioned rooms. And they come with their own bathroom off the side. Look at that. Similar price to what the floating cabins are. The floating cabins are just a couple of hundred metres up the river there. These are 500,000 kip a night so you're looking about 35 US dollars about 50 US dollars that's aircon you can get these ones no aircon is going to set you back 400,000 kip 400,000 kip yeah it's at 25 25 US bucks but how's this for an outlook hey 
I like these ones up here too. It's a bit murky this river. Little bathtubs down here. The difference between these ones and the floating cabins on the river is these aren't. These are built onto the riverbank. They do have your floating living area in front of your cabins that you can use. I don't know which one I want to stay in here. I'll take you down to use the ones right on the water. I'll let Nene decide. And they do come um, if there's a party of people with a couple of rooms. So you just double the price of the um, of a single room. Wow, look at those. Nicely decked out, aren't they? So this is your two room one. Yep. Nice hardwood floors, which butts onto those ones I was just showing you then. And this is a million. Million, you're looking at 65 to $70 for a couple of couples. And this is your own veranda. This is a bit of all right, isn't it? You got your own tree here. Coffee station. Hey, I'm liking this one too. What's this? What is this? Yeah, a little cooktop. Okay, they're just getting better and better. We looked at these first. But, so for this house, two couples. Yeah, yeah, they've got adjoining toilets. Come and check it out, Nino. Shine a bit of light on for you guys. Bathroom. Not stingy on the size of it either. And they come with a fridge. And water. What do you think of this? This is the million. Yeah, million. Million for a couple of couples. So it's yeah. it's still only costing you about 30 to 35 US if you're splitting it between two couples, hey? I don't like our room now. I want one of these. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're getting the breeze up here and... But that's in, on, on the river. Yeah, you want to be on the river, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it flogs down, hey? You can't beat that. Rain at night on the river. There is the phone number. We'll mark this place on a map for you. Three Rivers Resort. That's the stairway up to that the big place for a million that I just showed you guys. This is 50 Aussie dollars a night. You're looking 30 to 35. Much better set up than the floating cabins. Even though the floating cabins are unique in their own way, a lot more privacy here as far as the toilet and that you're not having to share. And this is straight out. Again, you, it's not floating, you build up, but you still got a similar sort of view. These you can still utilize. <laughs> Nina just pointed out, it is air con. As you can see, just up in there. And look at the gaps <laughs> in the roof. It would still get cool because hot air rises, cold air would sink, force the hot air out. You're still going to get some good use out of it. No doubt, just set up just for a photo opportunity, but how different is that?
Why are we back at Muang Fuang? Just behind these trees. It's around here actually. There is three large blocks for sale. Nini's been in touch with the people there and we're going to um, get a look, go over there and get a look at them and get some prices. Now, we're not going to buy them. It's just for investors, people who may be interested in um, doing business here in the Wang Fua. Damn, damn. We missed our window of opportunity, guys. We did. The heavens opened up and it flogged down on us for the rest of the afternoon. Um, yeah, so no new drone footage of the area and we weren't able to get across the river to get a close-up of these properties. We just we were drenched trying to get to the car, so we wouldn't have got any video anyway. But we do have these photos. These riverside properties are right in the heart of one of the fastest growing tourist destinations in Laos today, right on the Nam Leek River in Mwang Fuang. At the time of editing, the smallest block of the three was sold, leaving one at 8,000 square metres for 94,000 US dollars and a larger 10,400 square metres for 122,000 US dollars. I will remind everybody though, foreigners cannot. They can't buy land in Laos, not in their own name. It has to be a Laos citizen's name on that title so how you go about that is is up to you guys anybody interested or wanting more information on the this land please contact km land and house got the link in the description below all the whatsapp number things like that that you, you can get in contact and just find out more information on it And while we're at it guys, while we're on the subject of land in this area, just 20 kilometers south of Mwang Fuang, well it's still in the Mwang Fuang district, is some of the most incredible landscape you will ever see. Right up beside these spectacular cast limestone mountains is a large property of 23 hectares, 230,000 square meters, with a farmhouse and sheds for 400,000 US dollars. That's only a dollar 74 a square meter. Check out that landscape. That's I never get tired of passing through this area. It is just something straight out of Jurassic Park. It is. All these prices, guys, please note that it is an asking price. So prices are very negotiable in Laos. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and same again, you want any more information on this large block or the other ones I did mention, get in touch with KM Land and House. Link is in the description below with the WhatsApp number. I was just questioning the lady about breakfast. Um, that it, when they do have a fair few people here, it is a buffet. When there's when it's not fully booked out, uh, you just order off the menu and they will bring it down to the room for you. You can still come up here and eat. Tai Dam, yeah. Oh, I thought it did look a little different. Nice table there, isn't it? Let's look, let's look. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> small things guys, it's just small things.
this and they have microwave. What do we got there? Corn flakes. And they have many things. Any veggie? Veggie. They got now Nutella. They... Yeah, you yeah, have mustard. Mustard, jam. Oh, Watch, you've that. knocked knocked the bloody corn flakes over, love. What this? That's corn flakes. Corn flakes. Those. Yeah. yeah. Not as not as good for you as the brand flakes you've been hooking into lately. I've mentioned it before in um, the last time we stayed here up at the floating cabbage, how um, the river doesn't rise very high. But because of the amount of rain we've had this season, a couple of weeks ago, they did release water from the dam that's um, a couple of kilometers up river from here. And they had to shut these floating cabins down. Um, the lady here that's running this just said since then, the people just haven't returned. If you remember, we were on this side the first time, that was in Bimai, and just a couple of months ago, we were on the other side. We crossed by the ferry with Steve and Bev, and just about all of them were still booked out then. But since all this heavy rain, and since the news that they were releasing water from the dam, the whole river has just been quiet. It's not just this place. She said, even the floating cabins upstream. Yeah, this was only a couple of weeks ago, probably three weeks ago, they had to release water from the dam. So, and we have had a lot of rain since Typhoon Nauru. We're still copping the tail end of that. So hopefully people will come back you know, as the rain starts to taper off. I, I hope that that hasn't scared them about sleeping on the river on the floating cabins but this place you're not actually sleeping on the river are you you know you have got proper foundations under you she was also saying the government has now put a stop to any more floating cabins being developed along this river if you do want to develop they've actually got to be on the riverbank there is no restrictions on putting um floating decks in front of your cabin now you just they don't want any more built on the river for people sleeping in that because it would only be a matter of time before an accident's going to happen one of those ropes break something like that and you find yourself miles down the river when you wake up and uh but there won't be any more developed all the old ones that are there they can stay but um, there won't be any new ones being built. Well, uh, they've all got to be like this now. Which is a good thing really because you, you can put plumbing for the toilet inside your room. You can't have that when you're sitting on the water. What do we have? We got any? Hot dog, hot dog and papaya salad. Food and beer, just like I'll have a hot dog and beer. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, do I, man? I hope it's the type of hot dog that we know as hot dogs. Not like Chinese hot dog. Does the hot dog come on bread? Is it on a bread roll? They have no bread. Okay, what is it? Just a dog. Oh, the hot dog meat yeah. on the skewer. Okay, yeah, that's okay. I, I forgot the little round meatballs that were like a sweet and sour sauce. That's why they call hot dogs. You don't know hot dog. Oh, a hot dog is usually, you mean the Frankfurt? Yeah, hot dog. They call hot dog, but why? Okay. A hot dog is on, in a bread roll with mustard and a lot of other good shit. If, if you take the bread and that off, it's not a hot dog anymore. It's just just, what? just the frankfurt, just the sausage. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what kind of hot dog here. Maybe. Yeah, don't know. It's going to be a bit of a lucky dip. But the rain is coming down. We do have a dam right here. 
bit of a dam. And out over there, beyond my finger, is rice fields. Mate, she didn't muck around getting the beer and ice. Okay. She's just spitting. So if I can get some footage without destroying my camera. Yeah, a bit of a... Hello, Sabadi. Hello. Okay. They've got a dining table here. We could have sat up here. That's pretty cool. Hello. <laughs> so, yeah, these guys have been open five days. This dam I was just talking about, it's, it's a fish pond. Great fish in there. It's their rice field too. I thought they must have just rented this land off the farmers to have a restaurant here, but it's the actual farmers' land and their restaurants. They've whacked these little huts, the kitchen up there. They've got their fingers in everything, haven't they? Uh, fish, rice. Restaurants yeah. right on the side of the road, catching people before they get into town. Oh, look at that restaurant. Insect. And of course, yeah, they've got to do something about Insect. these lights. <laughs> Insects are shocking. Want to drink beer too. Yeah. Cheers, nyok nyok guys. Cheers, nyok guys. Big day coming up tomorrow. Yeah. I don't. Today, I... today is not big day. Be, today was just getting up here and seeing the guy about the land and finding our con and just Beautiful chilling. Beautiful land. Yeah. But tomorrow we'll be heading down towards Wat Sensei and some Mong villages down there and uh, meeting some people tomorrow. So beautiful country down there you'll know where we are when you see it yeah and hopefully it's not too wet and i'll be able to get this drain up okay and just a couple of minutes later check that out and that, that's what i was thinking of little owl hot dogs just the little meatballs with nut and like a sweet chili sauce and what's what's this dish here this is Spicy salad. Spicy salad. I'll be staying away from that. Uh, yeah, with chicken feet. If something in Laos is called spicy something and you're not used to getting your head blown off, do not go anywhere near it. Because if they say it's a little bit spicy, it's going to be bloody hot. If they say it's spicy, that friggin' kills me. It does. Looks, looks like we've got uh, hot dogs and insects here. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to tuck in. Yeah, they've given us a fork. Yeah, good. Usually they'll serve this with skewers. The sauce and the nuts is the best part. Don't know what the meat is. Mmm, cup dry.